following up to a certain extent on your opening statement, what do you consider the top two challenges likely to arise for the town of Orange in the upcoming two years? And how would you address them as first selected? And Jim, since you're the incumbent, I'll start with you. I think one of the biggest challenges that's of concern is the extra burden of taxes being put on by the legislature and the cuts that we potentially face by the legislature and the governor. We were supposed to lose our cost $448,000 in the budget we are currently in. But the state of Connecticut then changed their mind. So when you hear of the surplus to the budget, as was stated just briefly, we planned for putting money in, 138000 whatever number, for the teacher's retirement fund, for a reduction in education cost share money from a million two to 900 and change. Uh, from loss of uh, low SIP money and some other expenses that we were going to deal with with the state. And it didn't happen. So there is money in the budget even this year beyond. We have to vote by referendum on our budget. And then Hartford, when they get around to their budget, they vote on it. They didn't implement the things that they had talked about. So yeah, there is some surplus money in our budget. And there should be some surplus money in your budget. There needs to be a little bit of surplus in there. Some of the unknowns that are money that goes into the fund balance. Sometimes University of New Haven is a little behind in paying their payment instead of taxes for the uh, property on Derby Milford Road. That check comes in. Yale has their own mathematical equation based on the number of employees on the West Campus that they pay, so their check goes up yearly, but we never quite know what it's going to be till it arrives because we don't know how many employees they have on their campus uh, over there on the Orange West Haven line. And West Haven receives the same type of uh, uh, agreement with them. So that is challenge number one, is always going to be finances, the state of Connecticut, and their unfunded mandates and impacts on our residents. The second one, I believe, is housing varied housing, possible downsizing, possible other community living that some of our people, whether young or old, would like to stay in town and there's not always readily available for them to shift gears and have a, a smaller place but stay in the town that they love. Some people, their houses aging in place just isn't a possibility. I get amazed sometimes at some of the people that are my age, which is 60 as of last week, who've never had, who still, both parents are still alive and well. Oh, I'm out of time. Jody, your thoughts on the top two challenges or what you would pick as opposed to the incumbent? So I think taxes are one of the top challenges, and I've said it before, we can't keep blaming Hartford. Look at other towns in the state who are doing more with less, and they're not blaming Hartford for their problems. I'm not looking to blame Hartford, I'm looking to take the bull by the horns and take care of ourselves. How do we do that? Well, we've talked about sharing resources, and I never said that Amity was doing a study, I said that they approved to do a study, they haven't started the study. So let's, let's just correct that. But I think we need to do more, we need to do more with sharing resources with our neighboring towns to control expenses, and, and maybe in some cases we'll be able to generate some revenue. So taxes are definitely, when I'm going door to door and I'm listening to people, that's one of their concerns. My taxes keep going up, and what am I getting for it? Smooth roads? Okay, I guess that's quality of life is smooth roads. Um, I think housing is something that we need to be looking at. You know, every time we turn around, we have somebody else trying to put cluster housing in a residential neighborhood. Uh, that's, a, that's a big concern, and I think it's going to continue to happen. We need to be working with our developers. We still have about 2,000 acres of what's perceived open space that could be that is privately owned and that could be developed uh, over the next two years. Somebody could be coming in looking to do that. At the same time, we do need more housing. We need housing. We need rental housing for our seniors. We have less than 200 units of senior rental housing. We have, you know, my kids are millennials. You know, where 
they can't afford to buy a house in Orange. If they want to live in Orange, where are they going to go? So we definitely have a, a housing issue. I think Firelight still offers us an opportunity with the right program uh, coming before us. Uh, so there is definitely room. We have Route 1. When you look at Route 1 in, in, down in other towns, there's housing along Route 1 as well as corporate offices. So those are ways that we could be taking, getting rid of these empty big box stores and generating some revenue. So there's more that we can be doing, and I, that's the way I see it in the next two years. Jim, any further comments to Joey's response? Not at this time. <laughs>